What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Live to Roll Live. This week, we got an awesome te- topic. We're going to be talking to uh, Infinite Flow about uh, diversity and dance. So we have some really cool guests here to talk. Um, like usual, I'll do a quick intro. My name is Sean. I'm a C5, C6 quadriplegic from a snowboarding accident 17 years ago. Uh, Tom, you want to give a quick intro? Sure. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Thanks for joining. I'm Tom Conaway, C5, C6 quad as well. Um, been paralyzed for 24 years, uh, 28 years old. And I'll pass on over to our other illustrious co-host, Bobby Rohan. Hi, you're too kind. You're too kind. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Bobby Rohan. And as some of us were finding out, know me as Robert at Rancho Los Amigos. I work there. And oh, there goes Siri. <laughs> and uh, I've been hurt. As we were just talking about before we came on live, I'm about to do 32 years in a chair, C56 quadriplegic. And I will turn it over to a good friend that I've known forever, it seems like, as we said, to, since 2000. So Sorry, I want to introduce to Mia. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yes, I'm so excited to be a guest today and talk about infinite flow and diversity in dance. And I am a. P6, T9, 10, um, paraplegic, and I got paralyzed in 93. So if you're good at math, you can figure out my rebirthday age. Um, and uh, yeah, I've like known all these guys, and it's super, super exciting to sit here and, and chat with you and catch up. So thank you for having us. And our right. other uh, main guest today is founder of Infinite Flow, uh, Marissa Hamamoto. I hope I got your last name correct. For, uh, yes. <laughs> Hello, um, everyone. Welcome. So um, I am Marissa. Hello? Uh-oh. No, you're am I on? Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I, it was just like the staticky stuff. So hello, mm-hmm. um, my name is Marissa. Um, as Tom introduced me, I am the founder of Infinite Flow. Um, I am a stroke survivor. Uh, I had a stroke in 2006, which is 15. Oh my God. Has it really been 15 years ago? Yes, it's been 15 years. So I'm a stroke survivor. I had a stroke 15 years ago. Um, I do consider myself a non-disabled person today. Um, however, I can definitely relate a little bit to paralysis and um, the stroke led me to my purpose, which is um, which is Infinite Flow, which is a professional dance company composed of dancers with and without disabilities. And our mission is to dismantle stereotypes and promote inclusion and newly celebrate intersectionality. So thank you so much, guys, for having uh, having us on the show. And yes, this feels like family. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like family. I've known Marissa for, gosh, I think it's like four or five years now. I remember going to one of your first Infinite Flow events and dancing, doing the salsa and getting out there. Nervous as all heck. Um, for the first time, I had never danced uh, before in my life, like let alone in a power chair. Um, and I had just gotten involved with Triumph. And uh, yeah, I remember getting out there and feeling free, moving, and uh, feeling like a feeling I had not felt ever in my life up to that point. It was uh, pretty amazing. And, um, pretty yeah, well, cool. thank so, you, Tom. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, uh, awesome. I definitely. Yeah, I definitely remember you really well. Like you were, you were like, you were a hot, you were on a high. And actually, you know, to tell you the truth, um, uh, you know, it's people like you that remind me of why I do what I do. You know, like you know, dance brings such joy to our lives, and um, sometimes I forget that. You know, I get so much into business mode, and I'm on the computer, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, what the, you know, this is blah, this is. You know, but the moment I start dancing, I feel like okay. This is this is why I do what I do. And when I see other people just, um, you know, dance because dance for the joy of dance, as well as, um, you know, with my company dancers, see people kind of, you know, really dismantle stereotypes and break through the walls. You know, that's that's another you know time when I'm really reminded of why I do what I do. So, were you a dancer before your stroke? I was. I've been dancing basically my whole life. Um, uh on i will be really honest i never fit the mold of the dancer the dancer the 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 ballet dancer that i pursued while i was a teenager um and at the end of that was the stroke so um the stroke did feel like it was a slam uh slam in the door 
um, to my dance career. Um, when I, you know, I, I was, um, my stroke happened at the C6 level. So, I mean, I guess I could say that I was a temporary quad. Um, and I remember uh, at the most acute stage where, when, you know, I really couldn't move my arms, couldn't move my legs, um, lost sensation through my entire body. Um, you know, the last thing I thought was being able to dance. Um, so it's very interesting that now it's like I have a whole different perspective on dance and like, you know, anybody can dance with anybody, <laughs> you know? So that's, that's kind of like, I, I do feel really, really um, grateful and honored to be sharing my love and gift of dance to um, just many different people. And Mia's been part of this whole journey of building this, dance company since like literally day one so i just want to like shout out mia for just being such an awesome friend and partner and oh my god like without mia we would not exist like literally when i'm having some panic attack i call mia i'm like i'm like oh my gosh what the heck am i supposed to do and so she's usually the one that's like all right girl calm down let's let's talk this out you know so yeah <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, well let me so, ask you tell us oh, go ahead, yeah, and so tell us a little bit about Infinity Flow. What is it? What is it about? You're saying dancing. Let us know what you know if somebody's going to get involved with what you're um, offering. Um, what is it? So, and we can get excited to know what we're looking into. We'll get more into the scoops of inclusion after. If you want to just talk about the basic, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now, sure. And then we'll get and, into the scoops and, of inclusion also. Sure. And Mia, chime in, interrupt me anytime you want to. Um, and I will, first of all, before I kind of explain, you know, who we are, I will say that we have evolved quite a bit over the few years and we are continuing to evolve. So for anyone that's listening like months after this, we might be a little different already. <laughs> but um, anyway, just to kind of explain who we are today, right, this moment and the middle of this pandemic in which we're not really able to dance dance but we still kind of pursue our mission so our mission is to first and foremost um dismantle stereotypes and that is through the you know through the art of dance as well as storytelling um i think there's many activists uh whether they're disability activists or you know anti-racism activists or lgbtq there's many activists that use their words as a way to um as a way to advocate for more inclusivity and more you know equality and equity in this world so we do that through the craft of dance um you know a picture is worth a thousand words our brains process images uh, 60 times faster than words and so sometimes when you see the beauty of inclusion you can believe in its power so that's you know one thing you know so that's why we focus very much on um, content as well as performance and putting together high quality performances because our goal is to, you know, just let the world know that, hey, you know, just because you have a disability doesn't mean that, you know, you can't do X, Y, and Z, you know, and that, you know, and, and also it's really about, I think our, this, this idea about inclusion, it's kind of, gone, you know, it's, it's really expanded out of disability inclusion into the, this, into the inclusion of people of all colors, into the inclusion of LGBTQ and so on and so forth. So anyway, so that's one, one aspect is that, you know, we're using dance as a catalyst and as a vehicle uh, to, um, to, to promote inclusion and dismantle stereotypes. Um, specifically, you know, if I get a little bit more into specifics of what we do, uh, you know, we've performed, I don't know, a hundred and some times now and everything from school assemblies to big corporate events to college events to holding our own events. Um, and so we're, we're, you know, a performance dance company as well as, um, I guess we're, we can say that we're media, cre you know, content creators as well. Um, Another aspect of what we do is that we like to bring community together. Um, um, and I'll be really honest with you, I, I so miss meeting in large groups of <laughs> people. Like I so miss it. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. But anyways, you know, my, my beyond a stroke survivor, uh, the, 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 um, the incident that led me to really go, okay, I got to do something about this was, um, early on. And I, you all know him, Adelpho. Um, I met Adelpho mm -hmm. 
about five and a half, six, yeah, six years ago now. And, um, and this was when I was like, I, I felt the calling to um, do something in the area of disability and dance because it was very underdeveloped and learning that one in four people have a disability and seeing that people with disabilities didn't have enough, didn't have equal access to dance. I really felt like, like there was something for me to contribute and serve here. So anyways, um, I met Adelpho in the early days and this was more like me just trying to figure out how to go about this like new idea. And um, literally I just hit up Adelpho um, saying, hey, you know, I'm just interested in this area of dance, dance and wheelchair dancing. Are you interested? And he said, yes, <laughs> it was like after like days of stalking him on social media. Um, and then we met in the studio and I'll be really honest with you, I was quite terrified to dance with Adelpho. I was kind of scared because I had never really, you know, there's a part of me that was like, oh my gosh, am I going to hurt him? Um, and then there's a part of me that was like, oh my gosh, what the heck am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. So there's ego that kind of came about. But the interesting thing is after two hours of dancing with Adelpho, there was this magical moment where I realized that dancing with Adelpho was nothing different from dancing with anyone else. And that dance doesn't discriminate. And when you're dancing with someone, you see beyond race, color, size, age, gender, ability, and disability. And that night, all I can think of was, oh my gosh, if the world danced, there would be no war. And that idea was so big that I just couldn't leave it alone. And that eventually became Infinite Flow. And though we started off as a wheelchair dance company, and yes, wheelchair dancing is still a core part of our craft, um, it's kind of expanded into this, uh, what I call, what, what I like to say, a movement for inclusion. And so in our kind of our community events that are basically open to anyone, um, all abilities, um, any age, any, you know, any level of dancing, you know, the goal is for people to be able to connect with people that are different than themselves, realizing that, oh, we're all just human beings and we can connect with each other. So yes, yeah, so some of our work is community focused. Um, uh, some of our work is performance focused. Um, and then the third part, and this part is kind of still kind of like at its infant stage is, you know, um, uh, is, is really educating people so that they bring inclusivity and accessibility into their own programs, okay? And this is still like, okay, I'm, I don't want anyone barking. We haven't done too much in this, in this particular area. But what I realized is that I'm sure you all can agree um, like, let's say if you want to go, well, let's say you want to go to dance class. Like, in my opinion, you should not have to come to Infinite Flow to take dance class if you have a disability. You should be able to choose, oh, I want to go to this studio or that studio, or I just want to go to the club and dance and just have fun. You should ha be able to go anywhere, whether it's in the form of education or for the for in the form of recreation and having fun. But... And I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but as you know, not not all dance spaces, dance studios, dance clubs, et cetera, et cetera, are accessible. And this is not just physical accessibility, but let's say you can't hear, you know, and you want to go and take dance class. Is there a sign language interpreter? Is there someone that can that can help you through that communication channel? And so, um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so some of that, some of, you know, we're, we're kind of transitioning into how can we better educate the general public to, to embrace the beauty of including people with disabilities. And, and you guys have already started yeah. that, right? With the program um, called Specific With the Inclusion. schools. Yes, with our school program, um, we have started, like I would say that's our first attempt to really, uh, kind of start, and, and again, it's, just, it's not like we're giving people like a, this is how to go about bringing inclusivity into this. It really just starts with, and I'm sure Mia, Mia can speak to this, you know, before we give people a checklist of how to be inclusive, you know, checking off boxes, which is not really, not really effective for really creating true inclusion here, but, but we want to capture people's hearts. You know, there's got to be like an emotional connection and an, like a like a spark that happens on a personal level so that people pay attention to or and are interested, like genuinely interested in becoming more inclusive. So, for example, 
let's say at some random infinite flow community event, someone becomes like someone has like someone that's that's let's, let's just say non-disabled for the, for the sake of conversation. Someone that's never been exposed to anyone with a disability has this amazing conversation with Tom, for example. And like, and then like that person, maybe next time that when they hold their own party, there might be like, hold on, this space right here may not be accessible for Tom. It's on the second floor, there's no elevator. Maybe I should call Tom and ask, how should I go about, you know, um, maybe there's, maybe he can recommend a venue, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really first, first and foremost about kind of getting people to even just pay attention. I mean, Mia, what do you think? No, I 100% I agree. It's a lot about exposure. Um, we are in our, you know, community and we know everybody and we, not everybody, but we know a lot of the people here that live locally and it feels like a big community to us, but the real world may hardly ever meet somebody that has a disability or someone paralyzed in their personal life. So I think it's really important to just do more exposure, especially for kids um, and schools, because just like we teach them, they might not become a mathematician, they might not become a scientist, but we teach them those subjects because it teaches them how to think. It teaches them how to react and how to um, problem solve. And that's exactly what we try to do with our assemblies and uh, scoops of inclusion through Infinite Flow is exposing the kids to these types of thinking. Okay, well, maybe there will be someone different than me and it feels scary at first, you know, how do I approach it so that it's not scary the next time? And um, we were talking a little bit um, earlier about uh, kids and how they are the future and it's you know we a lot of times we focus on um, physical spaces being accessible and that's totally part of the job as far as helping the new generations to come around fixing those problems but there's also a cultural aspect to accessibility and that is people's mindsets and it once they get older it's really hard to change mindsets of people because they've had their experiences and and they have a you know fixed more of a fixed mindset kids aren't like that I see the immediate transformation from when um, we go into a school and say, me and Adelpho are sitting by the gym and watching the kids come into the assembly. They're looking at us like wide eyed, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, what is that? What, what, are, what, are, what are they gonna do? Like, you know, what are those things they're sitting in? Those wheelchairs don't look like what I've, ex I've seen in books, you know? Um, and so for them to, after the assembly, run up to us and like give us hugs and like, ask for autographs and like and there you know one girl even came up to me in time she's like i'm so happy you're in a wheelchair and i was like why do you say that and she's like because she's like i was just so amazed that you could dance in a wheelchair and i just never thought of that of somebody being different than me and you know having a different skill set but still being able to do what they love for a kid to get that concept after watching an hour of an assembly program is a gift and and such a testimony to the impact that we all can make on this next generation coming up so that we can change the world because they will be taking over. And we don't want generations of disability, you know, going down the line to still have to deal with some of the things that we've been dealing with. It's just, it's outdated already, you know? Let's, um, let's, let's make it more in the future and think more futuristically about accessibility um, on physical level and cultural. Yeah, Absolutely. And, and just, Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say awareness is, you know, the first step to inclusion, you know, is just making people aware that there's this whole culture, this whole community of differently abled individuals that, um, you know, still live life, you know, 100% perfectly normally, um, you know, that still have desires and wants, you know, just, you know, everyone, um, same as everyone else around them. And what you guys said, I just wanted to touch on real quick. Um, yes, absolutely. You know, kids are our future. Um, the, the effect, um, you know, just one interaction with, you know, someone from a different culture, from a different walk of life, from a different role of life, uh, for lack of a better pun, um, you know, it can have a lasting effect, you know, throughout that entire life. And um, it's really important to set that precedent early. And I think it could really um, take shape and take form, you know, in the next like decade or two. And I've been injured, you know, since uh, I was four years old, uh, since I was 
an adolescent. And I've been able to see and experience some of that change, you know, in my 24 years of being disabled. Um, so it's really amazing and exciting um, to think about this next generation and what it could lead to, um, you know, in the next uh, decade or two in terms of like inclusion and accessibility for, for everybody. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Infinite absolutely. Flow has a kids program, um, and just to see the kids in that program, the way they interact with each other, they're not thinking, oh, I can do something you can't do. No, they're all dancing the same dance. They may do it differently, but that goes to, like, anybody. I mean, you know, even the best, you know, of whatever craft, you know, the best chefs in the world, they're not going to make a specific, you know, um, meal the same way because everybody is different and everybody's different for a reason and you put flair and especially when it comes to creativity and your own journeys and i think all of us can relate to knowing kids in our life that have grown up knowing someone like us and the way they react you know my brother was seven when i got paralyzed and to this day and now he's you know 30 something he's a doctor and he he says that you know all the time people make comments or say something very ignorant about a chair and he's just like what like uh, and and then on the other hand he's also not impressed by it in the sense that people think it should be so inspirational all the time you know um one time he was at a grocery store and this guy was like like in a wheel doing a wheelie and some dance moves and the guy was like look at me kid and he was like yeah my sister can do that <laughs> you know but it was just funny that his reaction was just so like yeah that's, that's normal yeah i know it's and, so uh, funny my well, and i think it's it's exactly. really important to start real young to educate them if it's dance if it's sports if it's mm -hmm. just you know a career and whatever you want to do the kids then start just growing up that, hey, anybody can do anything. And I've seen it because they've come to my school and they've showed me. So I think it's really important to start, you know, when they're young and, and just, you know, it's funny when people kind of like you um, were saying with your brother, my brother just last night said a, a couple of people were looking at um, who he follows on um, Strava and he said, um, Matt, is your brother in a wheelchair? And my brother's like, yeah. And he's like, isn't that weird? My brother, <laughs> you know, he's like, what's weird? He had an accident and now he's living life. You know, he goes, oh man, I just, I'm so sorry. And he's like, why? <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> so it's funny. It just, you know, and then there's kids that are coming up like, hey man, good job. You yeah. know, like nothing's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So Let me, um, I just want to share, uh, Sean, is there any way I can share my screen? You actually can. Yeah. You can click. Yeah. Okay. Screen. I'm going to share something right. You know, I was, um, let me see. I'm going to share this. So can you all see my screen? One second. I have to, Not yet. one second. Let me just, uh, whoops. I'm trying to, I think you, yeah, I know. I, I'm, uh, whoops. Get to go. just enjoy Sean for a minute. There we go. <laughs> you know, I just had okay, to make that. Okay, so we asked um, elementary school kids uh, for this particular survey. It was, I think, grades three to through four. Um, we asked the question, what are the first three words that, uh, that come to mind when you think of the words wheelchair and disability? So before our school assembly, this is um, student number one, uh, pre-assembly, sorry, sad, mad, post-assembly, different, like the same things as you, and kind. All right, kid number, hold on, oh, I've got to, I've got to like do this. Okay, kid number two, pre-assembly, sad, worried, help them, post-assembly, wow, woo, go, you can do it. Uh, Student number three, uh, pre-assembly, tragedy, war, accident, post-assembly, awesome, brave, cool. Uh, pre-assembly, different, worried, hard for them, and post-assembly, kind, funny, cool. So that's just, um, that's just, um, you know, a little bit of, of that. And I'm going to show a, a, a quick clip. Kind of, you know, you may be yeah, completely new to organization. I'm just going to show a one minute clip of what this, what our, what our school. This is our school. This is not our school. This is actually our in person school assembly program. Is 
Let me see one minute digest here. Hold on. Let me see if. All right. Do you see that? Let me hold on. I gotta click it again. Uh, one second. There we go. Okay. Cool. Let me let me turn it on. Yeah, it might be a little glitchy, but hopefully not too bad. Imagine a world where diversity, inclusion, and equal opportunity don't have to be discussed because it's a given. Oh, it's Kansas a little glitchy. It's a language, and when you're dancing with someone, you see beyond race, <laughs> color, size, age, gender, ability, and disability. And when you are exposed to inclusion at an early age, it stays with you the rest of your life. Our school assemblies are 45 minutes each and are led by professional dancers with and without disabilities. This program includes performances, motivational speaking, and introduction to sign language, empowering students to become an inclusion superhero. I learned that even if you have a disability, it, it can't stop you from doing what you love. You don't have to be like scared that people don't like you because you just have to love yourself. And fitting in isn't always the best. We can be friends with different people because everybody's a human. It's cool to be different. It's cool to be different. It's cool to be different. Anyways, Oops. I don't know how I don't know if it was glitchy or not. Um, we will link the video. All the infinite flow videos, all of the websites, all the information um, uh, will be linked um, below. So <laughs> yeah. everybody can have, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so want to check it out more on their own. Uh, feel free. We'll definitely have all those links included. I wanted to touch on, on what you uh, did for a second, Marissa, um, with those kids and the use of their words um, before and after the assembly um, and that profound change. I don't know. like That stuff almost makes me want to cry. Um, I watched this really amazing TED talk um, by this woman named Amy Mullins, and she's a double below the knee amputee. Um, and it was like a athlete and a sports writer and a model and all this stuff. But she did a TED talk called um, The Opportunity of Adversity. And it was all about words and the words we use mm -hmm. and the words we use to mm -hmm. describe disability. And it all started when she looked up um, synonyms for the word disability found, you know, things like less than or, you know, um, poor, broken, um, you know, very disparaging words. And mm. we, and it should be our job and all of our jobs. And the fact that you are out there doing this um, with kids and at assemblies and at schools is uh, amazing and inspiring because we do need to change those words that we equate with disability. Um, it's, I think that is like probably one of the most important things because regardless of who you are, you know, if, those synonyms are, you know, in your brain, they're taught to you at a young age. It's hard, you know, even meeting someone with a disability to not subconsciously relate or equate them to, you know, these negative words. So I think uh, that is super, super, super cool and amazing that you're doing that. Uh, yeah. Really well, and I want to thank jump you, in on Tom. that real quick, because the mm -hmm. first speaking engagement I ever did, I started off when I about the definition of disabled. And I looked it up in the dictionary for the first time. And this is like uh -huh. 20 years after being paralyzed. And I looked it up and it was like, yeah, exactly what you said. It was like, sat, like not working, cannot work, you know, like just, you know, unuseful, like all these things. And I'm thinking that's so ironic that we do use that as a term, but if you do look up the actual definition of it, it, it completely does not describe any of us. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think that there even even if there's a caveat in the Webster's dictionary that says if you're talking about a person, then it means this, you know. Um, instead, Absolutely. Because, yeah. yeah, and one thing that you know, one thing that you know, schools gave us feedback um, pretty early on. I would say is that I mean, all of you on the screen here um, have a uh, visible disability. Um, but there are many that have an invisible disability. Mm -hmm. And um, in, a, in a school setting, um, you know, there are many kids who have a learning disability um, that you can't see. And so, um, and so, and you know, but then at the same time, you know, in terms of the, the messaging that we are bringing, uh, they, they said we were spot on in terms of, in terms of just accepting, and, you know, it starts with accepting who we are, you know, as ourselves, and then being able to accept others, it kind of goes, I mean, for me, it kind of goes both ways. For me, it was like being able to embrace the diversity of so many, you know, so like the 
the diverse human race led me to be able to accept myself. And sometimes for others, it's kind of like the vice versa. But, um, you know, uh, with that said, you know, um, we do have a, uh, within our company company, we do have a neurodivergent dancer named Lionel, um, who is, uh, who is, uh, who has autism. And again, invisible disability. He is a bad ass, oh my God, dancer. He can out dance anyone. Um, and you know, you don't really, again, you don't, because he, you can't see the disability, um, you know, it's very different from, probably from your experiences where your, your disability is visible. So people immediately judge you or, you know, from, but in Lionel's case, it's, it's almost like a, it's like the opposite in which it's when he starts talking or, you know, you have, you know, like, and, and oftentimes it's like, you know, I, I have learned it's, you know, to meet him where he's at in terms of communication and making sure that I'm not creating barriers for him to be able to understand something. And so, um, so anyways, uh, you know, so after learning, after, you know, the schools, you know, we, we started to really learn that, um, you know, it's, there are like, I mean, one in four people in this country do have a disability and not all those disabilities are visible. So, um, um, you know, I guess as a dance company here too, right now, I'm, I'm also going, how can we make, you know, you know, artists with invisible disabilities more visible? And that's something that I know that from our from talking to people in, that have invisible disabilities, they, they've they've you know talked to me about hey you know just by the way how how can you better represent you know us who have invisible disabilities? So that's one of the things that I think is most inspiring about Infinite Flow is the representation of disability uh, within you know like a professional dance company. Um, seeing you know people out there doing it just like the professionals and stuff but what that does and what kind of live to roll I, I think is all about like at least for me um, is showcasing the potential and the power of someone with a disability showing and showcasing you know what we are capable of you know sometimes it takes seeing someone out there dancing you know to be like oh my god like wait maybe I can do that and that is the the inclusion that it creates within the disabled community itself um, i think is really inspiring and really amazing um because you know especially for someone who's early on in their disability who you know maybe danced before they um you know were injured and are experiencing that loss and that grief but seeing you know someone dancing in their chair someone who's recovered someone who's you know gone back you know recover from a stroke or, you know, is doing it with an invisible disability. But the fact that you guys have brought awareness to that and they can see it and, you know, it can, it, what it can inspire, I think, is really, really um, amazing uh, and really, really cool. Yeah. And I think, I think I just want to also point out that though, you know, again, um, you know, one thing I've learned more as an entrepreneur, you know, as a leader and you know, uh, we're not everything for everyone, um, but you know, again, so our, our goal here is to bring inclusivity and accessibility into the existing world. However, I do want to, you know, say that, you know, organizations like the Triumph Foundation who are serving direct directly to, you know, disabled people, and by the way, I use identity first language and people's first language interchangeably for anyone that's, uh, that's maybe, you know, kind of critiquing me on language here. Uh, but anyways, you know, um, everything that you see at the Abilities Expo is also, also very, very, very important. Um, you know, I'll say that as an Asian American woman, uh, for me, um, you know, recently, uh, as thank you to this pandemic where I'm able to commute, connect with so many different communities um, via virtual, uh, you know, I, for the first time, I'm actually, you know, occasionally going to support groups for Asian American women. And there is this camaraderie and this, this sense of connectedness and shared experience that I can only share with this community. And so, you know, what Andrew is doing at Triumph and, and any other you know, um, group organization out there that is, you know, serving people with disabilities and creating a cohort, you know, from like-minded or maybe like age, like, you know, is, is also very, very, very important. That work is also important. So again, again, but, um, it, I think yeah. we all can be part of that puzzle that when you put everything together, everything works beautifully. 
Um, but I will say the one place I will say is that if let's say a dance studio is wanting to include, uh, you know, kids with disabilities into their existing program, and instead of trying to mold in kids with disabilities into their existing program, they said, oh, let's just create this once a week dance class and call it some, call it a special needs dance class. And let's just separate the kids that have disabilities from the rest. Then I have a problem. There is a, there is a um, mindset shift and perception shift uh, that needs to happen. So that's that's where those are the, that those are like the situations where I'm like, all right, done. <laughs> enough is enough. I don't want to get another phone call from any parent saying, oh, um, my daughter with X Y Z disability was rejected from our local dance studio, um, or she was put into some, the special class even though she wanted to take this other class. Nope, done. That's that's not cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, when, yeah. when I was like first injured and growing up, and like I was hurt four days before I was supposed to start kindergarten. So six months later, I was getting ready to get enrolled in school, and they wanted to put me in the special needs class. Um, and my mom was like, mm, uh, like I want him to be in the normal social environment, and they basically said, "Well, we aren't sure we can like meet his needs in you know like the regular classroom environment." But then my mom was like, "Well, then we need to modify the regular classroom environment to meet those needs because the importance yes. of that social inclusion with their peers, you know, like their able-bodied peers, is I think one of the most important things for especially young, um, young." young people with disabilities, knowing that they're normal, knowing that, you know, just because there's, you know, sitting down or, you know, move a little bit differently or, you know, process things a little bit differently does not make them different, um, you know, like in any way, you know, in any negative way at the very least. Um, and, you know, we can embrace those differences, embrace that change and wrap them up in the same blanket that, you know, everybody else is in. I think it's so, so important. Tom, yeah, and getting back to gonna, also what you're gonna come to one one of our in per. You're gonna be part of our in person um, school assembly programs. We're gonna we're uh, gonna bring I, you. I, I, I didn't know. You know what? I didn't know that you were injured at four. You know, so um, I'm sure. And, and I've I've talked to. You know, we have um, one of our infinite flow kids parents is born without eyes so he's been blind his whole life and one and, and he's also um his daughter actually daughter that's 15 ended up um doing the audio description for scoops of inclusion but anyway he's you know he grew up blind you know his whole life um and he told me he's horror stories over um you know just not being just being the other at school and so you know he he wants to also be involved a little bit more involved like when we go in person so but anyway tom you're recruited <laughs> also i would love to um get involved uh, yeah. that's what i'm all about you know i um, for, i fortunately uh, have the most amazing parents in the world uh the way you're talking Rusty, you remind me and my mom uh because that was just a rhetoric <laughs> you know, um you know about inclusion and not just for me but you know for every every other you know special needs student at that school and every incoming special needs student you know for the next foreseeable future um how can we uh how can we accommodate how can we make it work and um i i love it and i'm, I'm all about it and uh you know thanks to my amazing examples of you know an awesome mom and dad um you know i i think uh yeah i was blessed with a a good understanding and um also i got to experience you know i feel like almost you know a seemingly a, as normal a childhood as i could you know given the circumstances and what that has afforded me uh in my life like i'm grateful every day um because i i know how different it could have been and um it it makes me want to inspire and create those environments for other kids too um so i love it yeah. You know, and some Bobby, you, you know, you, know, you want to say something. Yeah. <laughs> touch back to, you know, what we were talking about a little bit earlier. But, you know, when we first got her or when I did 32 years ago, it was it was just sports. I mean, sports, you know, if you were going to go out and play sports or you're going to go back to school. And, and that mm -hmm. was only the options we had at that time. And now, you know, it's great to see all these new uh, options that we get and 
can display in our, you know, whatever makes us feel good. And not in sports is not for everybody. And that's what we were talking about. You know, maybe dancing isn't for everybody, but there is something nowadays. And what we've seen grown over the years, uh, there's so many more options. And it's great to see now dance, how it can be modified and um, accepted that we're going out and just feeling, you know, the way we want to and good about ourselves when we do these certain activities, if it's, um, if it is getting back into sports or if it's dancing or if it's modified exercises that you didn't think you could do. Um, it, it's just great to see with all these options and these new artists that are coming up with painting and sculpting. And, uh, it, you know, it's just amazing to see compared to what I saw so, so long ago that there's so many people coming out and saying, we need this and it happens. And now once we get it a foundation, let's go educate. And how can we educate to bring this to a broader spectrum of more people that, you know, can, uh, and especially with this pandemic, view it, you know, online. And, you know, for me with exercises now, I'm like an exercise guru because it's so much easier to get online and go, okay, let's do a 45 minute workout. Good, done, it's over with. Now on to the next thing. And that can probably be with dance and art and anything you put your mind to. I agree, um, Bobby, about that, and especially in the importance of it being exposed to people in rehabilitation, because rehabilitation is literally where you begin to form that mindset. Just like a kid, when they're born, those formative years are very important, and so are the formative years when we're reborn um, in our new body, so to speak, because whatever you learn in the rehabilitation center and, and the same for me when i was in the hospital it was all sports and at the time i was a swimmer and i that was the one thing i didn't really want to go back to at that time but i i remember thinking like well i don't really want to do these sports right now like i wasn't in that mindset number one but number two i did have other things that i loved to do specifically art or specifically dance and those things were not ingrained in me of thinking, oh, okay, now I know where to start. Because if I didn't know where to start, when I get out of the hospital, I'm gonna know, not know where to start even more, especially for the people that live in towns where they're going back home and they're not gonna know anybody else in the chair and they're not gonna know another community. Luckily, like you said, the technology nowadays is creating more of a um, inclusive environment and community where people can reach other people and find out what they love to do no matter what, because that's the most important thing. You gotta get back to yourself. And that self is there before you're injured and it'll be there after you're injured. And those things that you love to do before, you're gonna wanna do after. Um, it's just where our hearts are. And so we do need to make sure everybody has the exposure to go back to what they love to do no matter what, become themselves again, and realize that their life's not over, it's just a new chapter, and it's gonna be cool and a good ride. And I like yeah, to say it that- doesn't, Absolutely, it doesn't go away, and you don't change who you are, and sometimes it can get lost and pushed back, but once you can be exposed to so many things, all of a sudden you realize, I'm back to who I wanna be this social or um, closed person, private, or this very outgoing and doing all these activities. Yeah, you know, people with disabilities are the best life hackers I have learned over this time, oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, you all know how to hack your lives and even without even knowing that. And so, um, you know, I mean- Oh my gosh, let's call ourselves our that from now on. We're the life hackers. What did you say? We're going to call ourselves that from now on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. We're not wheelchair bound. We're life hackers. Yeah, you're life hackers. You're you're life hack. You know, really though, like really, like and 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 from a you know one of the taglines that I I like to use, and even though the word inspire is in there, and I you know some people don't like that word in there. I you know one of our taglines is inclusion inspires innovation, and um, I I put this in scoops of inclusion. And for those who are wondering what scoops of inclusion is, it is you know we took our school assembly program from an in person to an online program, so that's what I'm talking about, Scoops of Inclusion, I, I mentioned in this in this, in this short film, uh, but you know, the story of the typewriter, how, how was it created? Um, it was created from a blind woman 
who wanted to write a love letter uh, back in the 1800s. Uh, but um, at that time, the only way to for a blind person to write anything was if that person voiced it and someone else transcribed it. But a love letter is something that's super private. Like you don't want to voice that out. <laughs> so anyway, her friend just happens to be an inventor and that became the typewriter. And then it's evolved into now the modern computer to the iPhone, et cetera, et cetera. And so for me, um, uh, you know, what I like to tell, you know, people is that, you know, you know, put accessibility first, put the inclusion of people with disabilities first. And you know, you know what, you might come up with the next $1 billion idea, who knows, you know? And I almost feel like, um, like, I think if we took, if there was some, you know, genius scientists out there who can take how people with disabilities hack their lives to make things work, I have a feeling we're going to find solutions to some of the world's biggest problems in the world. Like, I don't know. That's just my personal hypothesis, which <laughs> I don't. But anyways, yeah. So I, I do think that um, uh, anyways, life hackers as well as um, world hackers, it is. <laughs> so... No, I yeah. agree with you 100%. Um, I think what disability often offers is a different perspective. It's an, uh, it's an ability to shift, you know, how you see things. And that greater sight can, you know, like force you to look at things in a lot of different ways and, you know, realize that there's usually, you know, one more, more than one way to, you know, solve a problem or to do something. Um, one thing I did want to touch on real quick, though, is what you guys were talking about, like rehabilitation. Um, and, you know, we like to talk about here on the show, like it never stops. Um, I mean, I'm like rehabbing 24 years later. And uh, this little story like popped in my head. Um, and I thought it was a perfect example of it. It has to do with infinite flow and dancing. And I did not dance for the first time in my life until I was like, I think, like 22 years old at an infinite flow event. Uh, with Marissa and uh, a couple other um, dancers. And I remember how nervous I was and how terrified I was. But just like you talked about earlier, after 20, 30 minutes of, you know, just flowing with someone, learning how to move the chair, learning how to move with someone, like that all disappeared. No, I, I was so nervous. I was going to run over their toes or run into them <laughs> or do something, right? But, you know, it just took a little bit of like flowing with that other person to, you know, get get a feel for it. And then... The reason I wanted to tell this story is dances growing up for me, school dances and everything, I was just like absolutely terrified of them because I was just always the awkward guy in the chair who couldn't get out there on the dance floor. And it was like, I swear, like three months after this infinite flow dance class that I went to, I was like bar hopping with some friends and we went to kind of this music -y club bar or whatever. And we were sitting right next to the dance area and some like beautiful girl came up to me and, grabbed my hand and started to dance with me. And oh my no gosh. one just backed up and like done everything in my power to get out of that situation. But I don't know what kicked in. Like maybe, you know, it was yeah. like my experience. And I think it was like my experience knowing that like I could, I could at least do it without acting like or looking like a total fool. And I was able, you know, like dance for like 15 and 20 minutes with, like, with this perfect stranger. And, you know, I have the time of my life and experience something that I never thought I could experience before. Um, so that rehab, the rehabilitation, getting out there and dancing, experiencing that stuff and redefining what I thought was possible in my head, constantly redefining it, you know, offers so many amazing opportunities, life opportunities and stuff that you never think about. You never realize like may come up and may present themselves and, you know, without putting yourself out there, without, you know, realizing how capable we are of, you know, doing some of this stuff is, you know, the life experiences that, you know, um, you can miss out on, I think, you know, are, are profound. So what the point of that is put yourself out there, experience it all, you know, don't be afraid to embrace that kind of stuff because it is, uh, and you so know, important. you know, the beauty with me was there was two things my friends told me growing up when I sing and when I dance, they just said, don't do it. <laughs> awful you just don't don't sing do not dance it just you look like you have two left feet it looks like you have something jammed up your you know what and it just doesn't look pretty you know and then now sitting in a chair it's like 
I don't care. It's not like I, you know, it's, <laughs> it's the wheels moving. I, you know what? Everyone's just happy that I'm out there on the dance floor. And I mean, that's how I met my wife going to country bars and doing country line dancing and doing Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Boom. I didn't know that. That's yeah. how I met my wife. Yeah, so, well, you know, it was at a bar, you know, dancing. That's awesome. Well, you all are inspiring me and you don't have to... to yeah, go ahead, Mia. Mm. Oh, I was just saying, it's a social connector, and you don't have to be a professional dancer to dance. I mean, that's the thing. It that was kind of the point is like... Or not, dance is awkward for the first time for anybody. <laughs> they, nobody knows what they're doing, and you're either, like... Uh, you have an affinity for it and you develop and you can get good at it or it's not your thing and it's just a social occasional thing but i think that yes super important for someone to have to go into a social situation where there is dancing and not for them to feel like oh my gosh what am i gonna do i shouldn't be here like you know everyone's you know thinking that i'm the odd man out or the odd woman out and i i really do think that that's a huge um burden that we put on ourselves um, when we start to let our disabilities say like, okay, we can't do something. As soon as you let that go and you say, okay, you know what? I might not dance like Michael Jackson out there, but yeah. I can dance and that's going to make myself feel happy. It's going to make other people feel happy and you're going to meet other people and be social. And that's the whole point. The whole point is communication. And there's some well, you know, you all are inspiring. Go ahead. Good. Tom, good. Tom, go, go, go. No, no you go. You go. You're a guest. I want, I want to hear Oh, you no, talk. no, no. What I was going to say was, you know, um, so this pandemic, uh, as, as much as, um, as much as my, my schedule blanked out, you know, completely kind of went blank and it was, you know, it was, it was sad, you know, but, um, you know, this, this conversation is actually, um, kind of making me go, okay. We need, you know, and I'm sure Mia, we, can, we want to, we're going to increase the spaces of um, commute more of our, we're going to put more, we're going to do more community events and, you know, intentional community events. And, you know, where we specialize in is, um, is really, really bringing an inclusive community together. But now that I'm hearing Tom, your testimonial made, made, made me go, oh, okay. You know, maybe this the, the, these are some of the stories that I'm missing out on. On is the actual impact of dance to people with disabilities. In addition to trying to get that out into the the greater world. But um, anyway, sorry, that's not. I don't know what what I said made sense there. But I think you know, post pandemic, as I as I plan for a post pandemic boom. Um, yeah, you know, let's celebrate with just more dancing. And I think, um, I think Tom, you know, I mean, your, your testimony does mean a lot to me in the sense that, you know, it's one thing to dance on your own, but it's another thing when you're, when you're connecting with others. And it's, and, and for me, again, you know, if you think about my origin story of why I created Infinite Flow, it was, it was that, that big awakening I had on how much, you know, through dance, you can connect with anyone. Um, and so, Yes, I am going to commit to right now just creating more of those 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 actual tangible you know connection points through dance you know post pandemic obviously in this virtual world it's Zoom is tough you know I I did a few Zoom things and I mean it's and this stuff is cool conversation is cool I have to say conversation is awesome some of this dancing stuff where we really want to have like in person kind of like energy fields, you know, meshing together type of stuff. It's hard with Zoom. It's really, it's, I, I will say that, um, you know, some some things just are much better in person and it's okay for, to wait, you know? So that's another thing too, which, you know, I think things come in divine timing. And, you know, if we're talking about rehabilitation, I'm sure you'll all agree that, you know, when you're first injured, and in my case, when I first had the stroke, and even after I walked out of the hospital two months later, for the first three years, I was scared to dance. I was, I, I was so traumatized from that stroke. And that stroke also brought in trauma from, you know, the rest of my, my, my early childhood and stuff. And so there's a divine timing to when you do what, you know, maybe for someone that's newly injured, 
you know, the first couple of years may or may not be the time to start exploring. And it's okay. You need, you know, you that person might need time. Or, I mean, I've also met people that were like, I was just injured three months ago and here here they are, you know, in dance class or in, in, in or playing wheelchair basketball or something. And so everyone's kind of got a diff- different timing. And what I've learned through running Infinite Flow and, and again, it's a whole different ball game too when you when you're born with a disability. Very different like is that um you know we do want we do want to um and as leaders i mean we're all leaders here in this sphere we all want to encourage encourage everyone that's got a disability to be more active but then also it's kind of like listening to divine timing as well as being kind of listening to your body and i think like to not um not feel not feel guilty or shame over feeling like you need more time for your own personal healing you know so yeah physical expression is as you know important as emotional expression and you know like expressing verbally um it's really important to move your body into um maybe more so for someone you know with a physical disability you know, might be um, mobility impaired that it is so so essential and important to shake it out and to move your body you know just a little bit every day um you know even if it's just like wiggling around um i think it's it's good for your mental health it's good for your physical health it you know helps all things and i think we can uh sometimes for, that can get lost on you know an individual like with a f- physical disability or any kind of disability you know maybe thinking like oh like maybe like dance isn't their thing or you know, like for me it was taekwondo when i was a kid um, going to martial arts and i had this amazing instructor that modified all the normal forms to just like upper body movements for me but it gave me that physical expression to move and mm-hmm. learn how different muscles worked and helped me rediscover how i could use my muscles and use my body in different ways and you know seeing like i could totally totally see and even from my personal experience feel how dance um could do that as well you know um to so bring your important. confidence yeah, and I think, I don't know how it was for you guys, but when I first got injured, because um, I wasn't in like a, an accident necessarily, I had a, a, a blood vessel ruptured in my spinal cord, basically. So it was kind of similar to Marissa's story. And sh- it was like a stroke. So all of a sudden my body just turned on me. Um, but I do remember, um, you know, once in the rehab with everybody that, you know, had a spinal cord injury going through it, there was a fear of our bodies. I don't know if you guys felt that, but I, I definitely had like this fear of like, how, what do I do with my body now? Like how it works so differently. Like, what if I do um, break something, or, you know, now that I can't feel it? Or what if I, you know, do do this and, and it doesn't feel right? Or And there was like a learning curve of trying to get back in touch with that feeling of that comfortable feeling you feel in your own body. And I, and I think that um, I definitely took that for granted before um, because I never really thought of it. I mean, I was an athlete, so I, I always did feel very comfortable as far as movement and, and timing. But when I first got paralyzed, that was gone for a while. And I think that dance would have immensely, immensely helped me connect more with my emotion, but also my, my feeling of connection with myself and my body, which is a, takes you a long ways as far as go, healing goes. Because once I did start to get used to how my body worked and how I could maneuver, then I started to, you know, definitely get back to my normal life again. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, yeah. That was like my experience entirely. Uh, I really wish like I would have even gotten involved in some of that stuff earlier on. I did want to shout out real quick. I just want to touch on this. Uh, we talked about it a little bit before the pod. But Mia, uh, it's so like funny and amazing and cool having you on here. Um, I like just in terms of inspiration, um, uh, you know, positive examples and stuff. I remember watching you and Angela and Tiffany and Ati like on the Push Girls uh, back when I was like 16 or 17 years old on the Sundance Network, like, living down in Southern California and doing your guys' thing. And I was just at that time like figuring out and starting to realize like what what is my life going to be like after high school. And after, you know, like, am I going to be able to move out and go to college and do my thing? And uh, watching your show and seeing you guys, especially seeing Angela, you know, like doing it, you know, as like a C5, C6 quad, I was like, oh, man, that is so cool. And like, that was one of my main, main inspirations for moving down to Southern California and, you know, pushing myself to get more independent and get out of there, you know, get out of my house and, you know, push myself and start living my life. Um, 
And so I just want to say, you know, shout out a little thanks to you and uh, all the ladies in that uh, whole show and the whole team because uh, that was such Yay. a cool um, example um, seeing that when I was younger um, and really, yeah, pushed me to do a lot in my life. I don't think I would have otherwise. So Push That's Girls awesome. pushed you to do more. That's awesome. Yes. That was Yay. Awesome. Honestly, Absolutely. I mean, that was the point of the show. The point of the show was whether you're disabled or not, whatever you may be going through in your life, you can push through it. And um, and that's super cool to hear that about um, your experience with it because that was exactly what we wanted to get out of it. And and I think that just goes to, to emphasize what we were saying before and how we started the whole conversation is awareness and exposure. And all of this does seep out. It's, it's a ripple effect. It will reach out to more and more and more people. Um, this goes to also what you guys are doing right now this podcast and and you know speaking about these issues and speaking about um, your own lives and sharing your own stories this is all a, a communal effort you know including like push girls and infinite flow and all all of us coming together and just forming such a big united community that's you know helping other people like know that their lives are are great no matter what um is really i i honestly feel very very grateful to be part of this community i i know a lot of people that don't know us, um, they they feel like, wait, what? You're glad you got paralyzed? I don't understand, you know? Um, but I think we can all relate to that feeling of it expanded our world. It made Absolutely. us more of who we are as people, gave us more purpose. And now we're just on a different journey and it's no less than what we would have had. It's If, if anything, I feel like it's, it's better. So my two cents. <laughs> Could have said it better myself. Absolutely, that was so yeah. awesome. Uh, so thank you guys so much. Did we have any questions or anything that we wanted to touch on? I'm sorry for was, you guys. My legs are just going crazy for some reason. This last I think it was more just well, comments, not a lot of questions out there today. Um, yeah. A lot well, of great you know, comments. Mia, Mia mentioned this, uh, I don't know, like a couple months ago, in which something that happened during this pandemic with all these Zoom meetings or you know virtual meetings is that because we see basically just a talking head, <laughs> you can't see the chair, it's kind of brought people onto this, I forgot how you worded it, Mia, but kind of, you know, people don't know that you're in a chair. And so you kind of um, get into like this equal plane in a way. I mean, is that how y'all feel, you know? Sometimes, you know, it's so funny you mentioned that. Um, I've talked on the phone with someone before and they did not know that I was in the chair, then they met me, you could see like that shock and that kind of initial <laughs> thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I, like it, it, that was like when I really kind of first became aware that maybe I wasn't on the same playing field or I wasn't viewed at that way. Um, but now after being paralyzed so long, I don't know, like I hardly even think about the chair or you know, the way <laughs> that my hands look or anything as it is. Um, you know, so I very, very rarely think like, does this person think I'm in a wheelchair? Do they know I'm in a wheelchair? Like, mm -hmm. I just roll with it. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, got it, got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I have found uh, that I have felt like that times in the past, um, going to going to events where I know I was going to be the only person in the chair, you know, just like social anxiety and stuff is like that feeling, that feeling that you know, are on a little bit of a lower playing field or just a very, a very least a different one than everybody else. But I'll tell you what, surrounding yourselves with people, you know, good friends, people, you know, make you smile, make you feel good, you know, who love you, um, that they make that all melt away from me. Um, you know, it just it takes one friend, you know, like sees me as, you know, Tom and doesn't see the chair and doesn't see the whole disability thing. Um, and, you know, just treats me like me. Um, that's all I need usually. Uh, you know, it's just a good friend by my side. Put my mind at ease. Definitely. Tom. You know, one thing I wanted to say, Tom, before we wrap it up soon, um, we've had Andrew on uh, throughout the entire series today. And, you know, sorry to hear about your family. It sounds like you went through a lot. And I'm glad you're here with us today. And hopefully you'll keep joining us uh, each week on Tuesdays and keep coming back. And if you have questions, uh, obviously you can always. Uh, ask them anytime. We'll be here every Tuesday. So um, keep your chin up, bud, and uh, hopefully uh, things get easier. And it sounds like they are. And I'm glad you were able to find the Push Girls on YouTube. And 
helped you move on a little bit. So that was great. Yeah, yeah. Um, Andrew, please feel free to reach out to uh, like me, Sean, Bobby. I'm sure any of us, you know, personally, uh, if you um, want to, if there's any you feel like you can't share in the chat. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a journey um, for all of us, and there are ups and downs along that journey. Um, but just remember, um, you know, there's like lots of positives, lots of uh, good, amazing things in life. Um, sometimes we just have to attune ourselves to see them a little bit more uh, when we're when we're struggling and when we're having hard times. It can be really easy to to see the darkness and to see the negativity and to you know see all the negative things around us. But to start to consciously identify you know things to be grateful for, things you have in your life that are positive, make you feel good, and um, you know. Do, do some little things that, that help reinforce that feeling. And uh, slowly but surely, I'm sure things will start to change. And uh, you need some extra help in that process. Like I said, please feel free to reach out. Yeah. Also, He's one last thing, help. too. One last thing. Uh, Sean, tell us about your new studio. I don't know if you can. We're in the new studio. Oh, and... me yeah. and first time here. For first You're time. Great. We're, We're finally in for the studio. New studio. Yeah, I am in the new studio, which is cool. Uh, it's kind of, uh, I haven't set everything up yet. Still kind of working on lighting and setting stuff up. But thank you guys. It's been four months of construction and work. And so, yeah, thanks everybody that's contributed and helped and everything. Just to shout that out for sure. Thanks, guys. <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, so, and also just make sure if anybody's watching, uh, all the links for Infinite Flow are in the description right now. Um, also for the um, scoops of inclusion, they have a video. It's a really cool video. You should definitely check it out um, and uh, check out the website. They're also both of the, their Instagrams and the Infinite Flow Instagram all in the description. So please follow follow them and uh, check everything they're doing out. So uh, yeah, th and thank you so much, um, you know, Sean, Bobby, Tom, for having having us on your show and. Um, yeah, you know, and I just want to say, you know, I'm just very grateful uh, to also be part of this community and continually learning on a daily basis. Um, I will say for anyone that's non disabled uh, listening out there. Um, uh, go find yourself a friend with a disability. I know it's like a cheesy ask, but like, <laughs> but literally all my, you know, I would say 90% of my friends now have a disability and you know what? They're my best friends. <laughs> so, and you know, um, some of these, uh, events, whether it be infinite flow triumph or, you know, like other adaptive recreation events, you know, put on by the, the number of other organizations out there. If you want to like volunteer, get involved, you know, does not require having a disability to, you know, get out there and support the yeah. community and, you know, become a part of the community. So, you know, there's tons and tons of um, places online you could uh, sign up for stuff like that or, you know, reach out to us in the region and we can definitely point you in some directions to uh, get involved um, in some of this stuff. It can be super, super rewarding and uh, really feed the soul and, uh, you know, feed your heart and mind. Lots of good stuff um, getting out there and uh, hanging out with a bunch of, like, beautiful, amazing people um, from a different walk of life. For sure. And Marissa, I just want to say, Marissa and Mia, thank you guys for being on here today, first of all. And also for, I mean, without people like you, you know, taking the initiative to create programs like this, to, you know, get out there in schools and to educate the next generation and to bring others into this um, amazing, you know, group and community of people spreading awareness and, um, you know, providing inclusion for everyone. Um, you, you guys are amazing. It is so inspiring to me, uh, and I'm so grateful to know you guys and uh, really grateful for everything you do for the community and for everybody, uh, for all the lives you touch. So thanks for being here today and talking about all the Thank magic. you for having us. Thank you for yeah, having good us. Good work, guys. Thank you, yes, everybody, good job. for watching. Mm -hmm. Uh, Don't like forget said, to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. And also on Thursday, we have the women's show coming up this week with Brianna. So everybody check yeah. that out Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 6 Eastern. So yeah, check it out this week. And next week, we'll be back for another live next Tuesday. All right, everybody live awesome. to roll. See you.